This is 7 News. Tonight, a footy club in shock. A young man dead after an on-field clash at Mosman Park. A family's tribute to a mother killed as police pursued another car. She really did look after her kids like gold. And commuter chaos. The northern train line grinds to a halt in the morning peak hour. From the studios of 7 Perth, Emmy Kavansky. Good evening. A 21-year-old footballer for the Mosman Park Club has died after an on-field clash in the first game of the season. Seven reporter Chantel Tui is at the club's home ground where it happened. Chantel, what do we know? Well, Emmy, 21-year-old Josh Henderson was going for a mark when his head collided with an opponent's hip. Now, teammates tell me they thought it was a fairly minor clash. They thought Josh just had concussion, but it was soon clear it was so much more serious and Josh was rushed to hospital by ambulance, but it was just too late. Josh Henderson was playing a C-grade match for Mosman Park. They were in their second quarter against Thornley when the accident happened. Now, tragically, Josh's girlfriend was in the crowd and watching the match when the accident happened. Now, Mosburn Park Football Club has expressed its sympathy and says Josh was a very popular player here. Emmy, it's back to you. OK, thanks, Chantel. The family of a woman killed as police chased another car have described her as a caring and compassionate woman. As they paid tribute to the wife and mother, Sharon de Coles, Ercole's family say they won't comment on the police investigation into the fatal crash. Sharon D'Urkol was killed on her daughter Lachey's 16th birthday. A mother of three taken before her time. Today, her grieving family shared this special tribute, remembering the woman who devoted so much to her family, describing her as a down-to-earth person who touched many people's lives with her caring and compassionate nature. A mother of three, she dedicated her life to her children, forming extremely close bonds. The family appreciating the thoughts, support and prayers they've received from relatives, friends and the public. Sharon Diercol was killed when a police car ran a red light and smashed into the side of her Toyota Camry. The police officers were chasing a stolen Audi, a pursuit that was not authorised. Lachey was also injured in the crash. The family says she is recovering. Other family members returned to the scene today. She really did look after her kids like gold and she just really was a lovely lady. That's, that's all I can say. I mean, just tragic. Alexis Donkin, 7 News. Police are investigating a sexual assault in Midland. Police say the 19-year-old was home alone when her attacker entered the house. Alexis Donkin reports. It's affected me quite dramatically. This woman has told police of a terrifying sexual assault. It happened on Wednesday night in her Midland home at 7.15. The woman was home alone, police say, with all the doors locked. She was watching television when the man broke in and grabbed her. It wasn't even from behind or anything. I just saw something in the corner of my eye and the next thing I couldn't breathe. It isn't clear if the attacker broke in or came in through a window. Police want the person responsible caught and fast. We would believe he's olive skin. He's about 170 centimetres, I believe, and age in his late teens or early 20s. I'm hoping that maybe someone saw something um, or has heard something, I don't know, something of any sort of assistance. Anyone with information can call Crime Stoppers. Alexis Donkin, 7 News. Angry scenes at train stations across the northern suburbs today with hundreds of people stranded by a train shutdown. All trains from Whitfords to the city were out of action for most of the morning after workers accidentally cut a cable. Anger and frustration at Whitford's train station. Trains stopped for four hours this morning after contractors working on the Butler extension accidentally cut a cable. Total disorganised. One hour we've been here. Passengers forced to wait for replacement buses. Well, it's taken an hour, we were told 15 minutes. Now it's a, we've been sitting here for an hour. Late for work, some paid for a taxi instead. And so what are you going to do? I'll get a car. And I pay for a taxi? Either, either get a taxi or walk. It's now 9.30, one and a half hours after the train stopped here at Whitford's train station, and these passengers are only just boarding the bus. Most of them will be at least two hours late to their destination. The Public Transport Authority has apologised. Our control room couldn't see exactly what was going on with the trains, and in a situation like that, we must always default to the safe. 
It's been a disastrous run for the rail lines, the fourth major disruption in as many weeks. Chantelle Tui, 7 News. A grieving mother is demanding an apology after she was shown the wrong body at the state morgue. Helena Zudewick says staff at the morgue tried to convince her she was in denial before realising the body they'd shown her was not her son. When Helena Zudewick went with her family to identify her son's body, she says she was already in a fragile state. 29-year-old Stephen had taken his own life just days before. But when morgue staff showed Helena the wrong body, it was too much to bear. I asked this, well, it's not my son. And she goes, yes, it is your son. And I had to believe that it was my son. And I, even when she walked out of the room, I'm talking to this person, I'm going, you don't look like my son. Helena says after studying the man's face, she knew it wasn't Stephen, but staff told her she was in denial. When they finally realised it was the wrong body, Helena believed for a moment her son could still be alive. I actually thought that someone had stolen my car and committed suicide in my son's car. And I wanted my son. Helena did eventually view Stephen's body, but she says the experience has been devastating and she feels for the other family too. That was someone's son, brother, husband... You know, I really like to apologise. The state mortuary says there was a breakdown in communication between staff which led to this unfortunate incident and they've launched an internal review. Beyond Blue or Lifeline can help anyone who is depressed or needs help. Chantelle Tui, 7 News. Politicians and business experts are hitting out at ANZ after its decision to lift interest rates independently of the Reserve Bank. The move has prompted fresh calls for homeowners to consider leaving their bank in search of a better deal. Stay with us here on 7 News after the break. A fatal crash, a car hits a power pole and we take you to the front line. Australian soldiers under fire in Afghanistan. And a big announcement from Hollywood super couple Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. A man has been killed in a crash in Westminster overnight. Police say the man's Ford Falcon veered onto the wrong side of Stratton Road, mounted a median strip and smashed into a power pole. Firefighters cut the man's body from the wreck. Western Power was called in to restore power lines which had fallen onto the road. Australian soldiers in Afghanistan have been involved in a running firefight with the Taliban. Seven News has obtained exclusive video of the battle, which Defence says is proof its mission to train the Afghan army is succeeding. Relatives of victims of the Titanic disaster have travelled to Canada to pay tribute to their ancestors on the 100th anniversary of the tragedy this weekend. An Australian engineer was among those who died and was laid to rest at a Nova Scotia cemetery. And time for sport now with Adrian Barrett and a cruel injury blow for the Dockers Barra. Yes, M. Nat Fife damaged his shoulder in today's win over Brisbane as Mark Harvey returned to Patterson Stadium. The, the former Dockers coach gets a warm welcome as Chris Mayne flies high. Mayne with a big grab. And the glory into a historic A-League grand final. That's all in sport. Now here's Emmy. Thanks, Barra. There's some rain on the way. I'll have all the weather details next, plus the winning numbers in Saturday Night Lotto. Well, we'll have more of this gorgeous sunshine tomorrow, but the wet weather will be returning. Today it reached a maximum of 26 degrees at around half past 12 this afternoon. Overnight it dropped to 11.8. Right now in Perth it's 21 degrees. To the satellite chart and a weak high pressure ridge lies over southern districts with a series of weak cold fronts moving south of the state in a westerly flow. Around WA isolated coastal showers near the south coast between Margaret River and Esperance. They should clear by noon but redevelop later in the evening but it's generally sunny over the remainder of the southwest land division around the country tomorrow brisbane a few showers and 25 degrees partly cloudy for sydney fine and partly cloudy in canberra a sunny day in melbourne 27 hobart a shower or two and 22 and a fine day in adelaide 29 degrees 
On the water, south to southeasterly winds at 8 to 13 knots, tending east southeasterly for a period in the morning, then tending south southwesterly 10 to 15 knots in the afternoon, seas to a metre on a swell of two and a half metres. So we're in for another sunny day tomorrow with a top of 28 degrees. Overnight, it'll get down to 14. And then looking ahead, sunny again on Monday, partly cloudy Tuesday, rain developing Wednesday with showers on Thursday and Friday before clearing for the weekend. And now it's time for Saturday Lotto. Good luck. That's seven news for this Saturday. I'll be back with updates later, but for now from the team, have a lovely evening and good night.